You just have to be careful when you move this, it shakes the. Got it. Maybe I can get that to hold a little better. We have, this is currently being boosted on Yoga Blocks. So while people are tuning in and while we're sharing, um, anyone as you tune in, let us know that you're listening. We've got the comments here that we can see. So as you're tuning in, uh, you know, people keep saying I need to find things to, to tune out the noise. And I'm like, no, it's about tuning in. All of this yeah, is uh, right. tuning in to what is here for you, right? And so for anyone that is tuning in with themselves in this moment um, and sharing this perspective, I'm just going to share this live through my Facebook page. And mine as and well. And mine. While we're sharing. Fabulous. All right. Wait, where did you? Ah, yes. Building your financial immunity with Christina Wise. Nice. The one time my uh, auto doesn't like to work. So anyone, if you're tuning into this, it doesn't look like yet, but we are here waiting patiently for you. Let us know where you're watching from. If you're catching this on a replay, hashtag replay, or if you have any questions as we go through this, by all means, please join. Party. All right, Christina, thank you so much for joining us on Mentor in the Mirror podcast. We had you on one of our early episodes. If you can believe it, this is episode 67. We had oh. you on like episode four. <laughs> so it's definitely time for a refresh and such as with any finance system, things have uh, things they are a change in. So for anyone that doesn't know Christina Wise, if you're looking at anything, she is the money maven, um, according to me, as far as who I go to. And she has a tremendous amount of not only experience, but insight and tools for you right now. So that's what we're gonna kinda jam on for now. I'm Cole. I'm Ta. And we've got Christina here on the show. So you know what, let's, dive in, Christina. Let's just kind of, what is your perspective? Where are you at within uh, this whole thing? Yeah, it's a wild time, isn't it? I mean, I was looking back at my calendar today to try to find an appointment that I had. I'm like, oh my God, it wasn't even two weeks ago when this all like just flipped on a dime. It's it's yeah. just how fast life can change is really remarkable. It feels like it's been a long time uh, for me anyway. But yeah, what I'm what I'm liking to say so is that I, I wrote a a a talk really what I called when I've been listening to a lot of different stories the last few weeks. When I noticed what was happening, I've been through this type of thing before, so I noticed like the many signs pretty quickly. And so I went I personally went to immediate action, almost like is is you know, just intuitively, unconsciously, just based on what I know. I mean you guys know how I teach money anyway, but just through through that, my body knowing, you guys talk about body, but my body knew what to do and to go into action right away, like two weeks ago. And so when I did that, it was like I said, just so subconscious that I then I started getting a lot of phone calls of people saying, Christina, like I have 30 days or what to do here. And, you know, just a lot of I wouldn't say it's like fear because the fear of the unknown is scary. And you guys know the nervous system. So I was glad that a lot of people are starting to reach out because they knew something was up and they're, they're nervous about their business revenue changing, cash flow changing, jobs changing and all sorts of things. So then when I'm listening and I'm automatically giving advice just naturally, like we all do based on, from our, you know, from our expertise, I started noticing I was saying the exact same things and then I was noticing that's exactly what I'd done myself. So I wrote this piece, it's called the 12 things to do right now, like 12 actions to take right now for business owners and entrepreneurs or really any household for that matter to really build financial immunity. And just like we're doing with our bodies for the physical side, you know, we're loading up, we're having some supplements, you know, maybe we're being even a little bit more careful with our diet and different things to build that immunity. But in other words, in, in other words we're taking action. We're buying the supplements, we're, we're getting whatever supplies we can get. We're taking action to be as prepared as possible for the, 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 the physical side. So <laughs> that is that way loud. I mean, we can hear it, but it's, look, I think everyone at this point is just going with the flow, right? I mean, I think that, 
got a, a saw behind me. <laughs> Oh my god! They, they always know how to time it just okay. like perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, exactly. We'll we'll be on interviews and somebody will come and mow the lawn right outside the window. Yeah. It's, yeah it's, to me, it's, it's like it's the perfect representation of the of that we're all just like going with the flow, man. You know, like no. just with exactly. It. So anyway, yeah. I wrote this piece that's the like the twelve things to be immune because we have to build our financial immunity and our financial resiliency just as we're doing. And the economic impact could be more scary than the actual virus itself. So yes. that's what I want to do is help people immune themselves as much as possible. Being building our financial our, our physical immunity through proximity, meaning isolation, through supplementation for all the things we're doing to to be, you know, produce put, create a situation we're least likely to get the virus. It doesn't mean we're not going to get it. So what we're doing, same thing on the money side, is we're just setting ourselves up for as much resistance as possible in these in these times. So it's a very similar situation. We want to prepare ourselves, protect ourselves, and pivot ourselves as much as possible. And that's what these these twelve steps are things things to start doing and and how I where they came from. Yeah, you know, and a lot of or some, maybe some people watching right now, Christina, don't even know the the depths of the roller coaster that you've had financially, personally, relationship with money and really understanding not only the mindset and energy of money, but the skill of money. And I think that what this virus is affording us right now as far as opportunity is some real significant reality. Uh, we are facing ourselves, we're facing our financial situations, our health situations, and um, it's a real opportunity to, to figure out what we're, we're gonna do about it. And you know, it's looking at who is going to run around, a, you know, freaking out that the house is on fire, the financial house is on fire for themselves personally, or go find the fire hose and figure out what, you know, how can we put this fire out? How can we get more for what we've got left and kind of creating projections and some planning because it's just not something that any anyone is taught unless you're raised in a family of finance it's not something taught so just to give people uh, kind of that little overview of what you've experienced financially before we even dive into some of these 12 steps i think would be really helpful so that they know you didn't accumulate wealth once and you didn't come from wealth this is something that you have you know your shit is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of, a lot of trial and error. But yeah, I mean, I've, I've certainly made and lost millions, but I've, I've built wealth along that ride and learned a lot of lessons that actually, obviously, I'm able to, to teach to today. But what's maybe more relevant to this conversation today is I've been through two recessions. The first recession I went through was uh, was early in my business career when I was just building my business. And at that point, I didn't, I wasn't prepared. I didn't, I didn't know about money then. I didn't get what was happening and I was Pollyanna about it. And I got my ass handed to me that first time because I didn't know, I just didn't know how to act in a recession. I waited it. I thought I was just going to recover and wait it out and I didn't act quickly enough. And yeah, I mean, nearly BK, it was a very brutal time during that first recession. The second recession I went through, which was in 2008, and I had a real estate business at, the, at that time, and it was a real estate crash, the subprime crash. Well, I'd learned some lessons from the first time, and I still wasn't as prepared as, as like I would have liked to have been, but I, I was more prepared than the first time. But the biggest thing before, between the first recession, the second recession, and now whatever financial storm we're in right now, is I took action immediately. And that's the biggest difference that we're talking about. Like whatever you do, a big part of the financial fear is not knowing what to do and not doing anything. Like paralysis right now isn't going to solve anything. It's just going to cause more anxiety. So that's that's one of the first things is like to start taking actions. And I can come, I can to talk about some of those. But yeah, the, for the second recession though, because I'd actually had planning i did these 12 things were not all of them then but i did much of the 12 that i'm going to talk about the most important ones today i was able to not only survive you know that was the first part of the strategy what i call survive first worry about thrive later like yeah there's gonna be opportunities and different things but right now it is survival we are in the business er 
and we're just keeping things alive. So we want to save financial life right now. We're not talking about cosmetic surgery to improve something that already is, you know, pretty good. Right. We're in the ER. So it's a, it's a different mentality going in. But in the second one, it's the, it was the survive first. What's my survival strategy? And I'll talk about this. This is a survival strategy. And then the second thing, then it became a second strategy, which is more the long term. How do I thrive out of this? But again, very strategically and the pivot in between the two. So that's what we'll talk about is is and then in the second recession, the wealth that I have today came out of the second recession. The the identity and business and so much of what I have today came out of what I did in the second recession. And it, and at the same time, make no mistake, it was scary times. I was in the real estate industry. People were losing their houses. They were losing their cars. Everybody in my industry was completely collapsing. So again, very serious, but strategically and going into it a certain way, I think is, I'm sure is what enabled me to, to actually come out of that situation in a very great position that ultimately, you know, was the kind of the, the platform, if you will, that I fully launched off of after that. So anyway, good, you know, it, but it was scary as hell at the same time because we didn't know a lot. So, I, you know, it's that same type of situation. It can be scary, but it's, if you're strategic, you're planned, you take action, you do some things, then it's going to leave you because you can only do what you can do. Like, let's take the actions of things we can control and really not worry about the things that we can't. And that's what we're doing. Let's take some action and things that that we know right now. So the first thing that I that I like to talk about here that always goes with everything all the time, but it is that mindset piece. And we are, you know, that's why I love you two so much. You just, you just, your mindsets are just so powerfully positive and but capable and resourceful. And and it's it's that's the mood, that's the mindset of like, all right, we're gonna roll with the punches, but we're rolling, right? And but mm -hmm. we're we're optimistic and we're going for this. And and that's the mindset. And it's it's like, I call it the ER mindset in the way that if we're going to the ER, if we we're doctors, we're going to ER, there's been a big tragedy and all of a sudden cases are just flooding in. What's the mood? The mood is, it's serious time. We've got to triage, we've got to make decisions, we've got to look at things. And it's 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 a stressful time. The ER, this is a more than usual stress the stressful time in the ER. But at the same time, different surgeries and things, you know, there might be some laughable moments, you play some music, I don't know. But it's just, I like to say that it's this, it can be danger on either side, meaning the a pessimistic fear base, the sky is falling, all of that, we know what that's going to produce. There's the opposite side that's really no better. And that's the Pollyanna mindset, the denial, the waiting, this will recover right away. Neither one of those ways of thinking or believing are probably going to set us up. So I'm, I say the first mindset is just a, a powerfully positive one that's actually very seal, serious. And what's happening in times like this, it's causing us to actually have to wake up when it comes to our money and fucking face the truth. Like reality is yep. just, just in the, fa in, the, in the face. And reality always eventually shows up. We can sometimes ignore it for a while. So that's, that's the great news though, because now maybe we can take some actions and do some things that we have been putting off that's ultimately gonna set us up all for better in the long run. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's awesome what you do and, and what you're teaching because this is what we teach as far as body is concerned. It's being having your body and your finances and your money and everything in a space to where if something like this happens, it doesn't rock you. It really doesn't knock you off your, off your feet. Everything you're, you're um, what I was thinking when you were talking is your financial nervous system is conditioned mm -hmm. for this, right? So when something comes up, boop, you know the alert comes on, and you know what kind of you know what kind of action to take, what kind of plans, how to move your money around, how to make things prepared. I mean, in your curbs program, you have you have a whole bucket set up for you know for rainy day and for your healthcare situation. So it's it's like you know this is all the planning. You know, when I condition my body, it's for whatever happens, whatever potentials happen. So if a virus comes, I don't get knocked off my feet. You know, mm -hmm. I don't get knocked down. And and this is this is you know the the mindset that you're talking about is so very vital, I believe, for when when we move out of this 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 
this contagion space for people to really start taking themselves seriously on a financial level and starting to educate themselves in ways that we're not taught in school, in traditional schools. We're not taught in any other kinds of programs. I think what you're, what you're offering to people is so very important. I know I said this the last time we interviewed you. What, what you are doing is so groundbreaking and so important. I think it's essential for people to educate themselves the way you have and with what you, with what you know. So thank you so much mm -hmm. for bringing that to the table. That, that financial nervous system is so very important. Well, and that's the whole, I mean, that's your whole brand, wealthy, wealthy, right? Wealthy is in like accumulating wealth and well as in the physical health so that you don't have to integrate your wealth into your health or vice versa. So what are some of the practical steps for you that someone could do right now? They realize now that they're stumbling, you know, they're like, oh shit, I'm, I'm going to hit the ground and I may not get up from this. Yeah. So I'll cover a few of the 12 and the here's, and these are actually in order. So we're going to take an order on this. And the first one, <laughs> we're, we're hacking and sawing away. Every time you start talking. Anyway, my God. So the first <laughs> one is what I'm calling. It's really cut the fat. So what happens when times are good is that you would get we get a little extra financial weight that finance that expense creep happen because things are good. We've got some little extra cushion. We're not really paying attention to our money. So the first action to take is to look and we do this in curbs anyway. This is stuff that we're doing when we're not in the situation. But part of what I want to say, too, is the reality we lived in two weeks ago it doesn't exist anymore we're in a totally new reality i know you guys are saying the same thing financial business everything it's just like if we're tethered to it at all like what it was that's a recipe for disaster so it's yeah. like cut the cord to the past erase it like it's never even happened and approach the future like we're on another planet we have to navigate this and it's gonna be one hell of an adventure so we might as well have fun and, and do what we can do Mm -hmm. But we have to invent inside this new future, in this new territory, this new terrain. The past is no longer exists. Like it, mm -hmm. it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. So it's like and we're not going back to that. And we're not going back. This that's over. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is something that people have been saying to us. When are things going to get back to normal? They are not. Nope. Your new, your, your new normal right starts right now. Right now in every moment. And are you preparing for the next moment right now? So it's yeah, man. <laughs> so keep going go keep on going, girl. Right, right. right on right on spot on point i awesome. love it yeah yeah so with the cut the fat is that uh, you know i'm just trying to think it's like okay we've gained some financial weight and this is both i'm going to talk both business business and household so if you're a household that's not a business owner an entrepreneur you're just worried about the household if you're a small business or entrepreneur you're doing this for both because you're basically one financial system so with the we're doing this in our we're cutting the fat in our fight in our business meaning now what's happening is we need to go through every single expense in our business and look at everything really over the next definitely the last 30 days and start removing everything that's not absolutely essential to your business right now mm -hmm. i did that two weeks ago and i did another pass through this past weekend to even do more based on new information yeah, so we're right, doing our pass through tonight. Yeah, so it's essential. You're getting rid of every single expense that's not essential. And even comparing things. I mean, this is serious in the sense that you're looking for money. We're, 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 the, you know, a lot of people are worried about, oh, income and what am I going to do to make money? That comes later. The first way you find you make it more income is cut your expenses. That's money that's now in your pocket and not somebody else's, or it's money that's not going out for to match the money not coming in. So this is the first way we give ourselves a pay rate and free up some cash flow is cutting the business. And it might seem minuscule, but right now, like every dollar matters. It always does, but now more than ever. So, I mean, I'm looking at things like, oh, I mean, simple things like, oh, there's BeLive as one software system and there's another one that's $20 less per month. Let me pro and con that very quickly. And I might, I'm pro and just everything to reduce and free up any amount, especially recurring, uh, recurring money to free up. So it's going through every single expense and freeing that up essential, non-essential on our household. Same thing. It's looking at everything. So when you guys went through curbs, for example, we're doing exercises like meaning and money. 
and really looking at freeing up and, and moving the money where you're not spending money on things that aren't don't fit your value systems that aren't meaningful. We're taking that now to the next level. So even after curbs, I've gone I curbs all the time. That's what I do. Now I just went through all my household spending again. And now, now it's not even meaningful, meaning less. It's essential, non-essential. We're buying as much runway as we can by, by freeing up as much of the cash outflow as possible that we can have that for ourselves or we don't, you know, if, if revenues do go down and income does go down, then we don't have as big of a, as a gap if it's mm -hmm. on the side. So that's the big thing is we have to cut that financial weight. We just want to do some nice little weight loss during this time and to, to really put it in this category of essential, not essential. And that's the ER type seriousness to go into it. And I mean, little things, I know it sounds silly, but I'm talking to my team, get rid of the $2 and 12 cents Google play. Like we don't need it. We use like in the, in good times, it's like, ah, it's a couple bucks right now. It might still seem silly, but every dollar really does matter. We just don't know how long this is going to last. Yeah. So that's, that's the first piece of, piece of like trim the fat, cut the fat. The gain, we want to be lean. We want our burn rate in both these categories to be as lean as possible. That's what we're going for because it's how we, much cash we burn on our business lifestyle and our household lifestyle. And that's what we're shrinking. We want it down that the burn is just on the essentials and, and to really and look at that. You know, it's just temporary, right? I mean, it's temporary three months, six months, nine months, 12 months. 18 months, but it's still only temporary. So that's the first thing. The second piece of cut the fat is look for places to negotiate. So I've had a lot of people call me that, you know, they, they only have 30 days. I'm saying, call your car lender. If you have anything over like a four to 5% refinance your car. If you're looking at other, uh, if you have credit card debt and maybe it's a, a 20% now might be the time to, to see if you can get a zero transfer, zero interest for a part of time. Just we're looking. So I love the quote that that you know during it's during difficult times that the genius comes out. This mm -hmm. is the time to tap into the genius. What smart, creative ideas can I do to find money? And there's all sorts of things, but that's just it. There's there's certain things right now, like my my debt guy said, you know, student loans you can put on forbearance, your mortgage you can put on forbearance. You don't necessarily want to do those things if you don't have to, because the interest still accumulates and you'll have to pay it all back, you know, more or less at once. But there are these things available that if you just, if you're a restaurant owner and just can't make your mortgage, at least forbear it so we don't have to hurt the credit and do these different things. So again, it's just taking action and really looking at any every line item of outspending in your business and your household. And, and it's a pause point. Is this, do we need this? Is essential, not essential? Can it be renegotiated? If so, what? how might we do that? And then once you do that, now you can feel better because you've taken action. You know you're in a better position today to weather the storm than you were yesterday before you had yeah. done this work. You know, when we did the curbs program with just in doing this the first time, this audit, we shaved off like a thousand dollars and least. at least because we evaluated teams and hires we were doing. And we also we reevaluated where we were placing money in our business that we were like, you know, that's not getting us any return, but we're paying four hundred dollars a month for this service, for this whatever. And it going back to that intentionality even. Right. And this was without having a crisis, but it's. Even when I look back, when I was a full-time musician, there was still money that I was not aware that I was spending. And it was the two, three dollars here and there at like bodegas and corner stores and, you know, an extra bag of chips, but they aren't essentials. And even going through, if you go line by line, like you teach in Curbs, to really assess what you're spending, we were shocked how much we sp were spending on eating out. We knew we were, but we were still buying fresh groceries. So it wasn't that we stopped eating out. Well, actually, we took a 30 day, yeah, like not eating out. Um, and now during this crisis, and I don't call it a crisis, we'll say during this climate, this, this situation, this, yes, this place that we are, 
we feel really good because I'm not eating out very much and I've actually like lost weight and feel better. And we're going to make a meal plan. Like we're going to plan our meals so we know how much we're spending on them so that when we do eat out, we can throw extra tip on for whoever's serving us because now we know great. Every time we eat out, we're going to do it once a week, but we're going to tip three times what we normally would so that we are off, you know, we're helping whoever is, not getting the financial abundance just by us being intentional and, pl and taking that next initiative to plan it. Yeah, right on it. And I mean, I just you guys were like model students. So it's so much fun to, <laughs> to, to hear the stories, but it, again, it's just about doing the work and, and a lot of this is awareness, even doing this work. I mean, that might be something that comes out like, Holy shit. We had no idea we we're spending that type of money. And yeah, and, pretty typical. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Get it, girl. Get it. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that's actually what I was completing to say is that it, it the awareness, like everything, this is maybe bringing to light a new awareness. We hadn't been paying attention to this and now it's an opportunity to do so. Yep. Yeah. The yeah. hardest, the harshest thing we'll ever face is ourselves and the choices we're making or not making. And, you know, people pay tens of thousands of dollars to go to Peru and do a hundred ayahuasca ceremonies. And this is a psychedelic experience. <laughs> if you want to know what it's like to do a plant medicine or power plant ceremony, you're in it, pal. There's no escaping you. So let's get that work done. Yeah. Awesome. So what else, what else for you, Christina? So, I mean, that's, that's the first thing. That's the first action to take in, we're checking in with our mindset all the time. And then the next one is I'm calling it, to really stockpile cash and so not just toilet paper. So on the inside, we're stockpiled toilet paper and water and we're really preparing for the quarantine, for the lockout, these different things that are right here with us right now. And, but we're, it's the inventory on the shelves is there if we need it. If we don't need it, then we end up having toilet paper for a lot longer than we ever thought we'd have toilet paper in the house. But it's, it's the same mentality that what cash is, there's a reason why there's a saying that cash is king. There's a reason why we in the money business, money education business, you know, just are constantly talking about emergency funds because emergencies happen, crisis happens, and it comes when you're least expecting it always. That's just the way things operate. So that's, that's what we're looking for. When we're freeing up the cash there and we're reducing the burn rate, what going with that now is any money that we can we want liquidity cash is what really matters if, if and so anything you can start putting into your cash account that emergency fund that's where the extra money goes it might just be to cover the bills but if there's a little more than the bills right now every dollar is since we're down to the essentials for the time being we want to start building that emergency fund even if it's ten dollars here a hundred dollars whatever cash there's two, and there's two types of cash that we're building we're building the emergency fund and right now we're looking at minimum of six months It's probably 12 months right now, just based on what's already happening, but you want some emergency fund there and there's different ways to get emergency fund. There's a, a cash. And I've been, again, I've been on the phone a lot, as you can imagine with clients and have these types of conversations. But one thing I've done personally for cash, I'm calling it, it's, I've always teach this concept, but now it's becoming really relevant. It's called become your own banker. So it's a way to have cash there to cover the deficit, assuming there might be one, like how do you plan for a deficit? And that's what happens in financial times like this. There's a deficit, our revenues go down, our income go down. I was talking with a, a friend today whose husband, just got notice from a big corporation here in town that they are required to take a two week furlough in April. That's mm. half his paycheck. So, you know, that's, that's money not there. Right. So this is, these are just little things. That's not even talking about, you know, my friend who's has a dog park and a restaurant and, you know, we all have these situations. So what we all want, if we don't have the emergency fund that's already funded, then it's like, how do you create one? One is to start putting all that extra money in there, whatever it is. The second piece is, is how can you get some cash to have, to cover the deficit in, if there is one during, for the next six months or so. So for me, I already had a decent amount of cash because I have my emergency fund going in. 
but also it's like I want to be even safer. So I did, I went to my whole life policy that I have. With whole life, you build a cash value, and I borrowed from my from my cat from my cash value. So I'm borrowing money from myself basically. It's got an interest rate on it. But so what? I'm going to pay four and a half percent interest to carry this cash to have it available if I need it to cover any deficits. Mm. So that's me funding my emergency fund. Now, so you might have if you own a home and you have cash in there, there might be a HELOC, which is a home equity line of credit. Refis are getting tougher right now, but it might be a time to refinance. But it's just pulling money in cash. If you've got if you built the equity there, you can't you can't buy your gas with equity in your house, but you can buy the house with equity that's now in a cash account. And then these are temporary solutions with the idea it's just like investing in yourself, you're borrowing to fund this time that then when things recover and you built the strategy to thrive, you're going to have all this money that then you're going to be able to pay yourself back. But okay. that's, that's like just really knowing liquidity and cash is important. And, and imagine, I mean, imagine what type of, where would everybody be from a financial nervous system point of view if we all had six months, minimum six months in emergency fund to cover all of our essentials? Yeah. It would yeah. be a radically different situation. Yeah. So now's the time to learn the lesson if we don't have that, that now we're going to always have from here on out. After we get through this, we're always absolutely positively going to have that emergency fund because the next situation is going to happen in just, you know, what matter of time. So that's, yeah. That's the emergency fund. And then the second cash account, if you can, is, and this is the why I just get down to the essentials, is the opportunity fund. So that's the, that there will be opportunities to come out of this. Sadly, you know, the reason why we're able to buy low is because people haven't, aren't in a financial position to keep their house or the Airbnb or whatever the case is. So that's, that's what the opportunities come out of that. And that's actually where you build wealth. Wealth is built in the the dips. They're not, it, their wealth is not built in the highs. And that's why preparation, you know, I learned this term prepper for those that are waiting for the, the kind of zombie apocalypse, you know, and they've got, you know, all their ammunition and their guns and their water and their toilet paper. They're like prepared for this. Like they didn't even have to go stand in line at Target. You know, they're like, I've been waiting for this. Well, on the financial prepper side too, it's having, it's like being prepped for, there's always going to be a dip. So when that's the case, it's like, again, that's, that's where wealth is built. That's where fortunes are built. So yeah. that's too soon. People are like, Oh, should I invest and buy stock? I'm like, I wouldn't I'm like, we don't know enough right now, but that's me. Like, how can we predict it's going to be volatile for a while. But when you notice when it feels like maybe it's the right time, then you have the cash to do that. Right. And like you said, with properties and things, the the unfortunate and fortunate, you know, uh, like when I look at the fact that even our lease is going to be up in May, could we find something comparable at a lower 500 bucks a month less because our lease is going to be up anyway, but, but something comparable, but 500 bucks over a year, that's a significant amount of money difference if, if say the homeowners in that case are just looking to cover the mortgage versus making a profit so they can hold on to the property. For now absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. wow i mean i know we could go on and into such depths christina because there's so many elements and nuances that you can teach do you have a handout or, or an offering so if people want to get like the full 12 step or more um, depth on it i know you have i think it's financial immunity dot yeah, financially immune dot financially immune Dot com. In fact, let me hurry and just type it in here. I think it's in the description. Yeah, uh, it's all 12 steps and, and it shares a little bit about what to do on each one. And I'll talk while you're doing that. I'll just talk about one more. And all 12 are really essential. I wanted everybody. I talked to someone and he said, 12 is too many. Can you cut it to six? And I said, I wish I could. Like I, right. I, I had to keep it to 12, but it's like I'm calling it the 12 step program. So, you know, it's a different type of 12 step versus 12 step for 12 steps for alcohol. Alcohol. We have our 12 right. steps to get us through this financial situation. But another one that's really important to fit into this mix here. And, you know, I, I teach run your household as a business. So I use a lot of business terms in household finance. But again, we're talking about the same thing here, ultimately. 
is the idea is so when we're reducing our expenses, our costs in our business, our expenses in our household, we're reducing, like I said, the burn rate, how much cash we're burning on a monthly basis. And we want to burn just to be the essentials for a while till we know more. Then, so that's cutting the fat. It's, it's really getting, lowering our burn rate. And then the cash, that's the runway. So the cash that we have, either we're, we have it already or we're, we're looking for a way to fund the emergency bucket and get cash in there. We want the runway probably the last six months if possible. If we don't have it now, just think about whatever, what, what might be available to fund the emergency fund now. Mm -hmm. So that's it. And that's because we're buying ourselves runway. Runway, if we don't have any income or we don't, we have a deficit, we can cover that amount. So that's the runway. The third component is called a run rate. And the run rate is basically, it's revenue or income projections. And so in business, we're looking at, man, business is booming. My business is growing 5% month over month, have my best months ever. And that's the time of like, that's the bullish market. That's optimism. Things are going great. And that's you know, we think as businesses and entrepreneurs, that's going to just go on and definitely keep going up, you know, but so the run rate though, when we're watching, we're projecting our income and our future cash flow, then what we're in, we're looking at that. So we're monitoring and we can make certain choices accordingly. Now what we're in, we now is really important, just like it's just critically important to look at your spending, like we talked about, it's just as critically important to get real with your potential revenue or income and start asking questions. If our income were to, to be split and it, you know, cut in half, what would be our action steps now? Mm -hmm. And to really start preparing for that. And if you have staff, you're watching your revenue so closely and making predictions that you have certain milestones in place that if my revenue, my income does go down by 30% next month, I'm gonna have to give my employees a 30% pay cut and let them know or whatever the case is. So you're really working in tandem with this. This is really important as business, small business owners who have payroll like myself and to let your staff know, like my staff knows we're watching this very quickly. I, I will do everything to keep them on full payroll, you know, even if I don't take anything right now because that I, it's very important to me. And at the same time, I can't sink myself to take care of them. So that would be a win right. loop. So the win-win is, but it's up to the business owner, up to each of us, you know, is responsible for our own personal household income one way or another to be watching the run rate. If it's a negative run rate and just start looking at that 50% off is um, if it, I mean, it's 50% revenue, what would you do next? Because that very likely could be here before we know it. So you need to watch your income and it's like being the metaphor beginning. It's like, we're in the middle, we're in, we're just sailing along in the ocean, going towards our destination having drinks on on the sailboat and jumping in the beautiful water and, and partying and cheering and having a great time. And all of a sudden out of the blue, boom, we hit a big hurricane storm. And now we just got serious, right? We're no longer cheersing on the on the boat. We're saying, you go, you catch the sails and I'll catch the helm and somebody get all the pots and pans tied down downstairs. And Whatever that, that's the mood where we would be going into is very serious. Like all of a sudden the party's over and we're going, we're going into to lockdown on the boat. Now, you know, with that, now we're, we've got, you know, we've got everything kind of triaged and put together now that it's a big storm. So all we have to do, we have to weather the storm, mm -hmm. but we're going to be course correcting constantly because that thing's moving. It's unpredictable. And we're just making choices as we come into contact with new information. We're watching the coordinates, we're GPS, we're in communication with as many people as we can to help us navigate this. And to know we will weather it, we'll get through, we always do. But the, core, the constant course correction is mission critical, especially for business owners. And so that's watching the, the income and just monitoring the cash flow, like really looking at the constant cash flow and then, but know the deficits, that if it's a deficit of, let's say, I don't know, $1,500 a month, we can stay out of that financial nervous system crisis slash panic slash, oh my God, what am I going to do? By just knowing these numbers, because it can ground us, and then we can get creative with that genius and saying, okay, I've negotiated everything, I've cut the fat, I've funded my emergency fund as much as I can, I've looked at, I'm tracking my run rate, now, what can I do to maybe make up that gap? What can I, what, what do I have to offer 
maybe not a new offer in my business, but maybe something like I have a skill set to some, a business that's actually doing well right now. Could I offer that skill set to them in, in for maybe a fraction of what I'd normally charge just to cover the deficit? So totally. right now, all the survival, these are the survival strategies. We could talk about survival strategies later, but right now it's just surviving. It's just staying net zero at the very least so that we're not losing our house, losing our cars, breaking our credit, and you know living in this place of turmoil for a while like like we can immune ourselves from you know real financial crisis from happening by starting now yes and i i love the how you just framed um about doing things at a little bit of a lower cost there's some things that we're doing to fill in the gaps for other people not even necessarily for the sole purpose of filling ours but they're at a serious decline and it's not that they would it's now it's not a matter of what our value is in a market where the dollar has no value in this moment basically you know what i mean because with how the dollar is crashed right now it the dollar is better for toilet paper <laughs> you know what i mean as far as like your personal value, you'd get more trading someone your time for a roll of toilet paper uh, once your bills are paid for. But when you come down to it this way, when it's like, how do you fortify yourself right now? Because once everyone gets healthier, once the financial organism gets healthier, then everyone will increase their rates again to get back to where we were, not where we were then, but as far as like the, just the rebuild and the, the progression that with the course we were on of progression, wherever that starts from. Yeah. And when I was in real estate, not, I mean, I still do real estate, just not as much as I used to, but, but when I negotiate a lot of contracts and it was always this funny thing because sellers always thought their house was worth, you know, a certain amount. And they would get all they get they just get all adamant about this and get moody about it. And my house is worth this much because I did these things to it. And it, it's all just their own personal feeling. And one of that's one of the difficult things between seller of a house and a buyer's that house is a buyer's actually going just off the comps because they, they no buyer wants to pay more than a house is worth. And so the mm -hmm. comps is the true value. And but ultimately, the value of a home is the market in the sense whatever the house sells for based on whatever a buyer in the market will pay for is the value it doesn't matter that the seller thought the house was twenty thousand dollars more it doesn't matter if the market two weeks ago was twenty thousand dollars more the market today that twenty thousand the house is the value of the house is twenty thousand dollars less just because of a market correction or a hundred thousand we don't know but the same thing with and you don't want to follow the market down you want to be ahead of that so the yeah. same thing, the value we can offer is only what people will pay. And if they can't pay a higher price, they're not going to for that $20,000, just like the home market. So it's a really good metaphor just to remember that if we get attached to things, we're we're probably going to be sitting with the house and the house is going to go into foreclosure as opposed to the sellers that got realistic and said, I'm adjusting my value because I want my house to sell. Yes. There was a, a, a friend that's an antique dealer. And he got some, you know, some painting. I don't remember who the artist was, but a, a big artist. And he said, you know how much that painting is worth? And, you know, I made up some number. He said, whatever someone will pay for it. Mm -hmm. So as of right now, if no one buys it, that painting is worthless. Like it, it doesn't have the built in value. So that's where we are right now as you, you know, looking into the community of who you can co-create with and do some exchange work. Maybe you're a body worker that you know, can for a friend that you can do an exchange if they mow your lawn. I mean, we're going to have to, yes, still honor the, you know, the government quarantines and all of that stuff. But just in speaking of terms of getting creative. Yes. Yes. Well, thank awesome. you so much. I hope those were helpful. But yeah, financially. Oh, yeah, we're massive. It's the, it's all 12 steps and it's action items. You can actually do a checkbox and like, did that, did that, did that. Yeah, I'm excited. I signed up already. So yeah, well, we're, we're anything, getting that. anything that you're doing, I'm in. in. I'm, I'm all in, sister. I love you too. I love you, too so I love you so much, and I'm so grateful for what you offer to people and for for taking the time to to give uh, the way you do because it always flows back, and that's something that that you know you taught us with money is you know you put out, it flows back in. You don't let the gate close. You know, you know, for from the back and forth, and you are always letting money flow through you. So I think it's really awesome what you're offering, and the education, and the and the love that you put into what you do. So thank you for and the for opportunity yeah. for people to learn this stuff now, right? Yeah, right it's now. like now's the time, folks, because you might have been buying 
craft mac and cheese. I hope not. <laughs> That's a different story. Uh, but even switching to off brands or other brands you don't usually do, like all those little decisions matter, as Christina said. The thing is, if you just stop paying all of your bills, then those companies go under too, or you'll have to pay it back anyway. So it's really sitting down and getting clear on where the priorities are. Whether if you've got medical bills and student loans and your house loan, um, you know, call your lenders, see where there might be some leeway or breaking up a payment or whatever. Get clear in your options. The more clarity you have, the more you can come up with a plan that is not reactive out of fear based emotional decision making because that puts you in a deeper hole. Trust me, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, got the t shirt. <laughs> Awesome. Well, do you have any um, last words of advice for anyone that um, maybe they're panicked, maybe they're just, you know, not, they're just in it uh, before we jump off? Yeah, I think it's just take action. When we take action with things that we can do, it really relieves a lot of the stress because we know what we're working with. It's the unknown that's scary. When we have more, when we have more knowledge, more information, we know what we have to work with, the genius comes out and we'll all solve the, you know, the problems that are right before us. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. It's really staying in the present, getting clear on what you need. If you're going to run out of tampons next week, start reaching out to your girlfriends now. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, don't wait until you're in the deficit. Have the projections of where are these lines at? You know, I have enough toilet paper for the next four weeks. So, you know, whatever. Like that, the more you can do that, you bring certainty to the organism and to the body, and that's going to alleviate a lot of that anxiety. So thank you again so much, Christina, for everything that you're doing, for everything that you've pivoted to start sharing with people about building their financial immunity. Uh, this is a huge opportunity for people to um, gain control in the chaos of what they can control, and it's very empowering. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for everyone listening and watching, if you liked it and you know, and we know you loved it, rate, review, subscribe, <laughs> subscribe share, share with this, a friend. Tag friends in the stream. Everybody needs to hear this. This is gonna, ever, gonna give everyone more certainty. We'll have the link in the show notes. If you're listening on the podcast, as always, we love you tremendously. You've got this. We're helping bring you tools. Christina's doing online uh, lives every day at 5 p.m. for virtual coffees and information. The resources are out there. If you'll pause and look for them, there's so many amazing coaches and mentors putting out like incredible tools right now to help you get through this with as much ease and grace as possible. So thank you so much for your time and your energy. My name is Cole. My name is Ta. As always, be, be free. free.